Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Liang from Virtualization, and uh, this is Lee Martin from from Step uh, Alliance. And uh, today we are going to do a presentation on uh, kind of a virtualization optimization. So giant VM. I just want to use one VM there. So mm -hmm. I think it's uh, the time is already start. So let's let's begin. Uh, first, I'll give some background about uh, what it is and uh, why do we want to use it. Uh, actually, this idea is come from three projects that I worked with other people. And uh, the first one, it's a VDI project. I worked with uh, Justin from Provo and uh, Thep Hanna. I worked with uh, uh, Lee and uh, Alex and uh, Dario, I think uh, since Lee is right here, it would be perfect for him to introduce a little bit on that one. And also there's a, a maybe a to-do project as computing. Let's see how could make virtualization fit on that one. So after that, uh, we'll do some brainstorm. Let's see how to optimize the virtualization in this specific um, situation. So let's begin, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, here, I call it a giant VM. Uh, it's not actually that really giant. It's just a term really uh, relative to the host. Uh, how do you say? It's not like the super big, super giant uh, as terabyte or hundreds of well, CPUs there, it's more like uh, it could uh, cover like over 50% or of the host resources out there. Uh, and uh, sometimes the, we, d we could only use like uh, a quite limited number uh, in the host, sometimes just one. And uh, But this VM should take a full advantage of the host resources in every way. CPU, Memory, I/O devices, and uh, then people may ask, uh, "Why do we want it? What kind of a uh, situation is this be rec being required?" So, uh, virtualization. I think uh, even we don't think today when talking about virtualization, we may think about the cloud, and we are thinking uh, there are thousands of uh, VMs running there and uh, maybe even more, even th sometimes uh, just on one server node there. But uh, even we get rid of this idea, we, s we just use several, one, two, ten, but we still have the benefit on management uh, uh, perspective. Like uh, if you set up all in your VM, you can just transfer this image to everywhere you want and uh, boot up it. Boom, it could work immediately. So that's also why we, we are, sometimes it is really necessary. And uh, besides that, sometimes like uh, VDI, sometimes like uh, people just want to move their work environment in a virtualization environment. And uh, VM, because we know VM uh, virtualization is uh, virtualize the bare metal. So it's supposed to do everything the bare metal could do. And uh, also could work like one. For example, we boot up this machine and uh, it, it see the, you, you could see all this uh, welcome logo and all that uh, uh, D-message information there and then your username and run application. So we know it's run on the laptop and uh, Bare metal, but uh, can we do it in a VM where we like we put everything inside a VM? It it shows everywhere, but we don't know. It just shows shows the theme. So can we do that? And actually, yes, we can. Uh, some situation will be really tricky, but uh, we can still make it happen. I'll I'll give you some more there. And Tabhana, uh, Tabhana is more like. Uh, they have high requirement for the VM. So sometimes the VMs couldn't be so many there because it will 
draw down the host side, it will make the whole service slow. So in that case, we don't want so many. And uh, as computing, so yeah, this day everyone talking as computing in this conference. Uh, but uh, it, it has this situation. You think as computing, it's like some server or some devices right in the, in the remote side. It's close to your end user. And uh, it's not like the traditional server side. It doesn't have so many physical resources there. It's not like have uh, multiple cores, sockets, CPUs there, doesn't have so many terabyte memories there. But uh, still, sometimes if we want to put virtualization, like I said, we took advantage of the management stuff. So we still want virtualization. But uh, the host limit limits the, the VM numbers. So like here, we, we could see, first, sometimes the customer want it. So we are making them happy. Sometimes the VM needs it. It, it needs to keep the VM first, so we cannot do that. And uh, sometimes the host is limited. It, it just couldn't uh, support so many VMs there. And uh, let's see some user case and the challenge here. The first one, so I don't see the company name here because something. And uh, uh, it's kind of a customer support work for me and uh, really not my, really not a developer job there. So it's more like uh, they ask questions, they put a requirement, uh, and I just uh, make it uh, done. So what kind of requirement they have? So. First, uh, this company, they have this uh, visualize application. It means uh, there's a lot of uh, picture gra graphs that are involved. And uh, they need uh, to analyze it, read them, and uh, do some, some stuff there. And uh, it also has a 3D requirement. But uh, for some reason, these code are in a quite old, uh, old systems there. Let's see, 11 p 3 We know that 11 p 3 is kind of a, a kernel 3.0. And we also know that uh, at that moment, uh, the graphic, the DRM driver, is not in there yet. And uh, so uh, it works fine if you are in a bare metal, but sometimes input the VM, there will be more tricky things uh, comes up. and. Uh, so now they, they want to, you know, so they also noticed that it's quite old and uh, they want a new system and they want to take uh, uh, four years of their uh, hardware because they, they are using very good uh, servers there. Helioid Packard, uh, some, some the uh, Z8, Z4 or something, like uh, quite a new stuff. It's kind of a so, uh, waste if they just use the, the old driver, the old kernel. So they, they are also started to transition, make this transition. And uh, so basically, like I said, they want to put everything in the VM and uh, the user, their customer, we are book, boot up this machine, like they put the power you also, every, you, you also the exact things that you see when you put up your, your, your workstation, your laptop. But uh, instead, deeply, it is actually running inside a VM. So let's see how could it happen. So first, we know we need the input, like the, the mouse, the keyboard there. We can do that. QEMU -Q can do that. We can, we can pass through there. and. Uh, also, sometimes because they also needed to use a, a CD player, DVD, blue uh, rear there. So it also can pass through. Like uh, no matter if you are using a HD or Word IO SCSI, and uh, that's fine. I, we can support that. That's also the easy part. And also there's tricky part. They're using a serial port there for some data tra transport. And uh, I, I never tried this one before, but uh, surprisingly, we can also do that. And uh, so then keep going. So 
now they are start to considering the performance now, since all those kind of uh, appearance looks good for them. And uh, they are thinking, so they are keep asking network, like uh, is it uh, fast enough? And uh, is it uh, flexible enough? Because we are going to move to cloud, the real cloud, some someday in the future. And uh, so we tried, we, we gave them all kind of a test based on, uh, in their event, based on this kind of a network. Like we tried SROA, pass through, and uh, we host what I owe, and some emulation like E1000 there. And uh, finally, they are de uh, decided to go into with the we host net and also enable multi queue support there because they want one gigabyte at, uh, one gigabit per second, uh, the speed there. So that's fair enough. That's not uh, that fast. So, but if you are using PCI pass through or SROV, it could very close to the real hardware. We will we'll see later. Mm -hmm. And also the disk, a little bit tricky because uh, they have another machine there and they will, this is the server here. They will collect the data from there. And uh, usually, that they needed to pre-process this data for a while, and then move to the graphic card, GPU, uh, and do move, uh, so they use the GPU there to process this kind of data, because it's all image data there. And then they will put it to another way, uh, another application there, for, for the, just uh, for, for display them. So it also needs the 3D requirement there, so there's a, a lot of uh, uh, fire movement. Uh, and uh, so we can't use, uh, so in that way, we can't use uh, the logical volume. We can't use the pass through for them. That would be much better in that way. But uh, we don't. So we did a bounce of uh, this kind of uh, cache mode optimization and the different device, what I.O. block, what I.O. sky C, and uh, all the, these kind of things. And also like, like I.O. threads there, we will talk about later. But uh, uh, finally, they're going to what I.O. block. Actually, it's a little bit better than what I.O. sky C. And uh, the most uh, tricky part, VGA. And uh, like I said, it's a workstation, so, uh, they have this dual monitor requirement support. And uh, uh, actually, uh, Spice from the QEMU, we, we already support it, but uh, with that QXR support, but uh, they are stick to 11FP3. We can't do that. So I think that part took us a lot of time. I think I, I worked with, yeah, a lot of people here work together, like the Bruce, Lin, and uh, Takashi. Takashi also helped us set up this uh, build a QXR package uh, for 11 at P3, but uh, still couldn't make it happen. Uh, we, uh, the first time I'm come out with, like, with a VGA pass through, we, we may just pass through the, the uh, graphic card uh, inside, but uh, because of the budget, because of the power consumption there, we couldn't do that. So it's uh, kind of was stuck there for for months. But uh, at last, we came up a solution. Not not elegant, kind of ugly. <laughs> but uh, we're actually going to use the very old stuff of uh, X, uh, over the X, XRD or X, the server X the server stuff there like uh, this VM and uh, the VM has this GPU driver. The the VM works as a X server. It's on the host, so we use the host to function as a X client. So now we still we just uh, set up from the XORD part, just a simple command line there. So now the display 
it's showing on the on your mon on the two monitors there. So the 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 root is more like uh, from this monitor going to host, and then from the host connect to guest, and uh, the guest actually uh, processing the da the data, uh, the image there, and the Im image is using the data from the host. Host uh, is processed by the another GPU there, with the data from there, another device there. So it's kind of a uh, really tricky for that part. But uh, we met the minimum requirement, so it's good. Uh, this is a dumb project, at least uh, for my part, virtualization part. So the other one is still an ongoing project, like uh, with uh, Tapana, try to put uh, this work on QVM. So I, I'll leave it to Lee here. Okay, so thank you, uh, Lian. So um, Lian, I'll take some talk about the Tapana. <laughs> project since uh, this is uh, something we we've been working on for quite a while. Maybe some who were here last year will note that I uh, talked about KVM on uh, SUSE Linux last year. So here are a few facts around the, the KVM area. So um, while Liang is talking about uh, giant single VMs, um, in these Hapani use cases you can see a single a giant VM is indeed a starting point for the workloads for customers, but it's of course not the ideal where customers want to go to. So ideally, uh, um, we want to have, or as customers want to have, multiple VMs running on the system. Makes sense to consolidate. But um, as Liang, Liang was saying, though, those VMs are still very large, so they would not go below a single socket, for example. So when we do move towards, for example, multi VMs on a single host, it would only go down to being a, a single socket. So the workload is indeed quite large. Um, also, for those who know SAP HANA, it is a, indeed a very large workload. So typically, we're looking at multi-terabyte systems and into the hundreds of gigabytes for VMs, also a few hundred cores. So it's, it's really stretching and pushing the limits of what KVM can do, uh, which is why I, from the Alliance side, need support from R&D or from labs to work together as a single team to try and push the limits of where we can go. Um, also, as part of SAP HANA and those who know SAP quite well, uh, SAP is quite strict and has a, a very um, intensive certification process for everything around SAP HANA. I see some nods in the, <laughs> in the audience here. So basically SAP have shared with us and, and their other partners in virtualization uh, a whole group of artificial workloads which we can use SUSE internally to test the technologies. So this is where the labs are particularly interested because now together, uh, working on the teams, we have now artificial closest to real world workloads generating transactional um, workload or analytics, really pushing the system. So it's not only good for our SAP HANA work, but also good for improving KVM technology in general. So this is why I think we like to, to work together very well. And it's really a, a good example of how SUSE then works as a community in itself. So yes, this is due to the proprietary part of HANA. We cannot share everything in the open community, but across all the SUSE teams, we can work together and really bring labs together with R&D, with QA, with alliances, and make sure we get something that works. And um, in May 18 last year, so we did actually achieve a single VM certification with SAP. That was on SLES 12 SP2, which for you guys here probably sounds very old. Um, it is quite old these days, but still, that was uh, able to achieve this SAP results for two terabyte KVM, which is quite a lot of respect, I think, for an open source product. When we're looking at VMware and comparing the resources they have, it's, it's a good achievement. Um, one thing I'd like to mention that, that comes up a lot as well, and also in this round, is um, my observation is also that KVM is not KVM. So KVM, yes, is somehow a technology with a particular interface and way of dealing with things. But if we look at other providers who work with SAP, be it in the hypercloud area or in public cloud, they're all using a KVM in quotes, but a KVM maybe in some cases has some kind of special hardware accelerator with an interface into there, or maybe um, uh, has more hardware integration. So we from the open source SUSE side or other open source neutral vendors are competing with those hardware near and close vendors with hardware interfaces like their own PCI card to have a network interconnect. So when you say, hey, company, this one has achieved the certification, they meet all the KPIs, hey, Sousa, what the hell is going on here? Well, it's kind of hard to compete when you're just on the software layer trying to compete with another person saying, well, I have this special PCI card, I have this special interface. 
and that makes a very, very big impact on performance. So it's always somewhat funny, yeah, it's KVM, but it can be done differently in different companies with different technological advantages. Uh, yeah, and um, right, I think we would skip then to, to the next slide. So during the work with, with Liang, of course, we're looking to how to um, push KVM further and how to actually get these performance, uh, performance um, KPIs reached. So a very big topic is, of course, NUMA topology. That's pretty clear, I think, that one should at least map through the NUMA topology from the, hub, the hypervisor into the guest. Um, in particular, with big workloads like a HANA or a database, the application is NUMA aware. And if it's making decisions and the topology is something completely different to the hardware, you have latencies and performance, which is really quite disastrous. Um, network performance was very relevant, I think, as in the VDI ins instance. So we got into discussing about multi-queue technologies um, and how to, to use those, the same as uh, maybe packet sizes on the network. We actually originally in the, the, the original certification use a PCI pass-through to get performance uh, working, but it's not really ideal for, for customers. So we looked into DPTK and SRIOV technologies as well. And um, yeah, basically here, there's a lot of references to, to points we were looking at with Liang. But I noticed we have the five minutes, so um, I will let you continue. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for... Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just like Lee said, it's kind of a... There's a whole... Uh, things there's a bunch of things to do. Like if you are interested, uh, you're quite interested in this uh, scenario. Feel free to contact us. We can still keep working on it. And uh, another one is like uh, this is uh, not really start yet. It's just uh, some research investigation there. Like uh, so, uh, when uh, for like uh, as competing there. So. Could we use the virtualization there? And uh, uh, how could we make it better? So now let's see, keep closer, look at this as computing. So it uh, works remotely. It, uh, it do something remotely close to the user. So it's not inside the cloud. So in this way, it may have some more security requirement there to protect the data from customer. And uh, also, like I said, the hardware resource is limited. It couldn't support it. And also, it we are involved because talking about edge compute, it's not one. It's there. It's all the edge of the, your whole cloud, and even some frog cloud there, uh, frog and uh, computing there. So there will be many, so many, and. Uh, so they also need uh, distributed management. In that case, bare metal may not be quite good. And also some real-time uh, requirement. Even not real, real, real time, but at least it needs a low latency uh, le there. And uh, so some, some user cases, like uh, auto drive there, and uh, they need to uh, deal with all the information from the traffic, uh, from the environment, to make the right decision. CDN, we are already using it everywhere. Sometimes we are reading something, we are watching something. Actually, it's not from the original data center, the original server. It's just from some uh, edge, or we call it edge server there. So anyway, and uh, the original is from the VF in AF way. But uh, still comes to the question, is it uh, really virtualization necessary? Yes and no, depends. Sometimes uh, you want to use bare metal virtualization, or even containerization, so that depends. But uh, does people want it? I think yes. Only if like uh, if we could make this uh, virtualization fit it a little bit better, like uh, uh, um, a little bit more lightweight, and also some specific user case, like uh, we want to uh, make it. Uh, mm, because in this situation, sometimes it's not like the general usage for VM. It's more like uh, we boot up, we, we need some service, we boot up this uh, VM, and we use it, it's done, we, we destroy it, and then we boot up another, so quite a frequently. So this time we may think some time to uh, make our VM initialization faster or boot up faster there, so we will see. So it, it's uh, still ongoing. So during all these cases, like I said, so 
we don't use so many VMs in the host. And uh, we want to each of the VM uh, quite if it works quite efficiently there. And I could also uh, work as somehow to the host server. So maybe we need to have a look about our the, the today's the, the object there, the, the real hardware there. I'm using x86 and Intel. So just to give you some idea, like uh, today, mostly Numa is quite popular and uh, it's everywhere. It's, it's almost a standard requirement for this server. And also, if you look deep down a little bit further, the, uh, the traditional North Breeze, South Breeze is gone. And uh, the CPU always almost moves all those kind of PCIe and uh, GPU and uh, memory controller hub there. They all move inside the CPU and also Per, per node, like a per, per CPU node size. It's kind of the same as uh, uh, Numa, which there's a path, where, which there's a root there. So somehow we need to find the shortest, fastest root there to make our whole application faster. And also like uh, the interrupt uh, architecture there is also changed. They're using uh, LAPIC, IOPIC. This is all the things we need to think about when we really optimize those things. And also, since we are talking virtualization here, we need also had, uh, have to have some basic idea on this kind of hardware virtualization. VTX, EPT, uh, IOMU, even IOMU. Now, like I said, they're all inside the CPU side. And then the other side is the device virtualization, like the GPU, network card, and the uh, disk. It's kind of all going. Sometimes we also need uh, what the capability of your device could have, like uh, multi queue as our IO way. Uh, if not, you can use MDV to do a software implementation. Neither way. So it makes the things much faster and uh, have more performance on the side. So this is kind of a basic look on the new one. Like, uh, so it's more like uh, node per node oriented. Like uh, if you go the, the same memory, the same uh, IO controller to the same CPU, that's good. But if you need to go to the other side, that's bad. And that's the thing we want to avoid. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. I think I couldn't make it. And uh, this is a uh, 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 this is a big picture of how QVM and QEMU working there. And uh, I just uh, want to mention two main parts there. We don't think it's as a hypervisor. We think it as a application or just a application as the, the other things. There are the two parts here. One is there's a main loop in the QVM side for all the uh, 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 vCPU. And also there's another main loop in the QEMU side. It's for all different uh, IO threads. And uh, uh, there, that's another uh, like a bottleneck, uh, uh, bottleneck there. So uh, most of the thing is need, like if everything just uh, working, as we know, there's this kind of uh, uh, guest mode and the QM uh, mode there, like the root mode and the non-root mode is for, for VM. If we all run in uh, uh, guest mode, that would be ideal, that would be perfect. There's no difference between VM and uh, uh, VM. But uh, in real reality, it's not going to happen. There are still that uh, two uh, main loop. There are two uh, log there. Uh, I uh, th think there we need to think about, and uh, that's also kind of uh, what we are working on. So I did some. Uh, uh, I get some data from my my server. So just uh, one moment. <laughs> Sorry for guys. Just uh, uh, one moment here. So. It's almost done. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, most of the data you see is from the QVM XZ here. It, uh, it holds uh, 2,000 there. And uh, that's wh where it happens uh, in, the QV in the QVM main loop there. And uh, you see there's a kind of a different thing. There's a, if you have the interrupter from outside, if you have memory uh, page fault there, 
and the EPT page fault there, it will cause VM access. It will be so many different levels, that's really bad. That's the first thing we need to think about. And uh, that's, mm -hmm. And the other thing we, we think about is from the QEMU side, because I said it's just IO thread. We need to make sure we don't block anywhere. And, uh, uh, we don't in, uh, and that's, that's uh, a little bit uh, uh, lighter than VM exit, but it is still a uh, main few issues there for we need to be care about. So uh, after that, it's just some bad uh, practice. You could uh, find it on our uh, best uh, practice uh, document for SUSE. So you can just uh, take it a uh, quick look, like here. We can disable switch and uh, disable what I would balloon and uh, disable KSM. So in that case, there's no over commit mm -hmm. and a uh, new mod thing. And uh, it's better to have multiple, try to put a, uh, to equally uh, dispatch to different uh, NUMA node. That's is for try to get a faster path through the, your hardware. And uh, we make it. This is for how to deal with your kernel main loop. <laughs> and uh, I also read this is for your QEMU loop there. It's more like, uh, just think, don't think it as a hypervisor. Just think of a normal uh, person a Q application, how you to do one to eight. And uh, like uh, try to use the word IO device, enable multi queue for sure, PRE, try to find a better number for it. So others like uh, maybe user space driver or real time virtualization. Like I said, real world time virtualization is just a new project comes to me from last SUSACON. So maybe next year we'll have more discussion on this part. And uh, I think that's it. Sorry, guys, a little bit <laughs> over time. <laughs> okay, but uh, you can find me on the side, so if you are interested. Uh, again, thank you for coming. Thanks for your time. Thank you. <laughs>